Hey everybody, this is Ray Ogilvy from Hartsville, South Carolina. Now check these out. These are percussion caps. These were used during the Civil War to fire front-loaded muskets and rifles. I found these particular percussion caps on a road that Sherman's troops used on his famous march through the South. They may look small and insignificant, but they mark an important advancement in the way these old guns were fired. Percussion caps were introduced in the early 1820s. They were cup-shaped and made of brass. They were made to fit on a specially designed nipple on the gun. The outer edges of the caps were split so they would flex slightly. So when they were pressed onto the gun's nipple they would cling to it. The bottom of the cap contained a small amount of a shock-sensitive explosive material known as mercuric fulminate. The nipple that the cap sat on was hollow and positioned on the back end of the gun's barrel. When preparing the gun to fire, the soldier would first load it by pouring the correct amount of powder down the gun's barrel and then dropping in the bullet and tapping it down with a ramrod to make sure it was good and tight. He would then pull back the hammer and place the cap on the gun's nipple and the gun would be ready to fire. When the gun's trigger was pulled, it would release the hammer, causing it to strike the cap and causing the cap to explode. This would send a flame through the hollow nipple and into the gun's barrel, igniting the powder, which would cause the gun to fire and propel the bullet outward. Before the advent of percussion caps, most guns were of a type known as flintlocks. This type of gun relied on a piece of flint locked into gun's hammer to ignite the powder. When the trigger was pulled and the hammer released, it would strike a specially designed metal plate known as the frizzen. This would create a shower of sparks that was directed down into a bowl located beneath the frizzen. This bowl was referred to as the flash pan. And next to the flash pan was a hole that led into the inside of the barrel and that hole was known as the touch hole. To load the flintlock, the soldier had to pour the proper amount of powder down the gun's barrel and then drop the bullet in using a ramrod to tap it down. Just as would have to be done with a gun that used a percussion cap. But in the case of the flintlock, he would also have to pour the proper amount of powder into the flash pan. And then the gun would be ready to fire. When the trigger was pulled, releasing the hammer, the flint would strike the frizzen, creating sparks that would ignite the powder in the flash pan. 
this would send a flame through the touch hole and ignite the powder inside the barrel and propel the bullet out of the gun. As you could imagine, it would be much quicker and easier to put a percussion cap on a nipple. Besides being more difficult and time-consuming to load, flintlocks often misfired. This was due to problems like wear on the flint, or the powder in the flash pan getting wet. But the percussion cap didn't have these problems. It gave soldiers a reliable way to fire their guns and saved precious seconds on the battlefield. Thanks for watching.